It all started in ancient Greece. Participants would dress up in masks and give small scenes of dialogue. Over time, these small scenes grew into grand productions. Like any form of entertainment, its reputation spreads and eventually makes its way to the Romans. And that is where our journey into Roman theater begins. In the beginning of Roman theater history, most of the plays coming in were Latin translations of ancient Greek plays. One thing quite obvious is that most of the Roman comedies were working off of a Greek original. And yet, we know they weren't just translations. They twisted in various ways to deal with Roman issues. The Romans had a variety of performances on the stage and weren't just limited to tragedy and comedy like most people think. They also had satires, poems, mimes, and even pantomimes. Pantomime is what we now call mimes. It's when you imitate something but without using words. But mimes imitate things but do have words but they cannot reference or directly relate to what they are imitating. They are just often improvised rather than literary and that is not used to tell a story but to be silly. Now we have the playwrights, we have the plays, and the only thing we are missing is the theater. Surprisingly, the Romans didn't build stone theaters right at the beginning by decree of the Roman Senate. For a variety of reasons. The main reason being, it was too time-consuming to build an entertainment venue and seen as a waste of time. Thus, the Romans had to perform in more of a thrilling location. Circus were one of the first entertainment venues. Here, Romans participated in chariot races, dances, music, even plays. They were set up with the plays sets and benches. After performances, the sets would be dismantled but the benches would remain for spectators to sit and enjoy the fun of the chariot races. This was more of an overnight thing that sits closer to when a modern circus arrives. They build some bleachers, put up tents, it's over. Here one day and gone the next. Eventually, the stone auditoriums are built outside Rome. Especially in southern Italy. However, these designs weren't purely Greek nor Roman. Rather, a mix of the two, a Greco-Roman style. It's not super obvious to the average but the Greek and Romans had different setups and locations for their theaters. The best place to find these differences is in modern day Pompeii. It is home to two Greek Roman theaters. The larger theater is a Greco-Roman design. While the smaller theater is a pure Roman theater. By looking at them, you can see the differences in them. While a Greek theater wraps around the position of performance, the Roman theater is more like the modern day auditorium as it has your audience and a stage that are separate from each other. Greek theaters were also placed near temples to emphasize the purpose of the theater whilst Roman theaters weren't as critical on where they built these venues. While theater flourished in the Republic, Rome itself was still theater lacking. Finally, in 55 BC, Rome had built their first theater. For scale, the University of Arizona's football stadium could seat about 56,000 people. The theater of Pompeii could sit about 27,000 people. So half of the UA football stadium could sit the maximum size capacity of the theater of Pompeii. Even today, Roman plays are still performed with a modern context. Our expectations for comedy and tragedy were set by the Romans. Thus, Roman theater presents an unrecognized truth. History knowingly exists in a book or in a classroom. It endures and we are still willing participants, 